there are two things that I absolutely love. Uh, one is storage devices such as NAS devices. Specifically, I love me my QNAP NAS. This thing is amazing. I've got myself a rack based one. And the other thing that I love is this virtualization platform called VMware. Oh, love me, love me some VMware. Do you know that you can get the two things working with each other? Like if you're in the VMware side of things and you're running ESXi or vCenter and you have these things called data stores, you can actually make one of those data stores be storage that is on the NAS. As long as you ensure that your ESXi hosts your vCenter environment and your NAS doesn't have anything in, in the middle that could be interfering with the connection. So you've got to think about the firewalls, you've got to think about if they're on different subnets, different VLANs. One more thing before we do get into that, subscribe, do the subscription thing. Let me know uh, in the comments at the end what you thought of this video as well. You wanna know more about VMware. You wanna know more about QNAP. You wanna know more about other techie related things. I've got full length training courses on lots of topics on technology, including hours and hours of content to become a pro at QNAP, to become a pro at Windows Server, to become a pro at IT management, VMware. You know, sometimes it's very, very hard to be able to get a nice glimpse of all of the tech that I've got running. There's a lot of IT infrastructure. There are servers, switches, networking tech, and even business applications in small, medium to large, and even massive enterprises. You can easily lose track of what you have. And sometimes it's really, really hard to be able to easily capture all of this to get a nice map of what is going on. So we're gonna talk about this tool called Fathom. Essentially, it's a tool designed for IT people, for pros to be able to map and visualize and monitor your entire IT infrastructure. Essentially, it helps you to understand your entire IT system from one single spot. It provides a clear view of all of your servers, your applications, your dependencies, all of your infrastructure, your cloud-based stuff, your on-premise servers including VMware, Hyper-V and even your physical servers and what I love most about this is just how easy it is to actually use. Fathom passively behind the scenes just maps your entire infrastructure without even using any agents and having used a lot of tools to be able to see my tech at a glance I love the fact that this is fast, it's easy to use, it's cheap and it's agentless. It is fantastic. The nice thing about this is you can trial it completely for free so you can really go and configure Figure it in your environment, see the benefits the same way that I saw the benefits and then you can go and pick it up. Down below, I've got a link to it in this video. Let's now log in to our QNAP. Let's log in to our VMware environment and get the two things up and running. Here's the difference between a NAS and a SAN. You've got the NAS component. If you ever hear of a NAS, you're always talking here about something that is file based, something that is going to be uh, using NFS, the protocol NFS, something that's going to be using uh, SMB share. Then you've got the SAN component and the SAN bit is what is called block based. And this now works over iSCSI. It works over fiber channel and it uses these things called LUNs. Okay, so this is now block based. It's a chunk of data that you are gonna be providing to a device on a network. In our case, we're gonna be providing this block-based piece of data to a uh, VMware environment. Now, regardless of if it's a NAS or a SAN, the QNAP, and this is what I love about the QNAP, can act as both a NAS and a SAN. Now, I've got a VMware environment. I've already logged into my ESXi host. This is my ESXi host. If I go into the host section over here, you'll see that this is running version eight. This is the brand, this is all the specs of my VMware host. This is the IP address, 172.16.1.108. So this is a, a demo lab environment uh, host that I'm gonna use for the purposes of this demo. In a real life production environment, you may have one ESXi host, you may have a pool of ESXi hosts, you may be managing all of this within a vCenter environment. So all of your hosts within a cluster and that sort of stuff within vCenter. Now I'm doing this on version eight. If you're running version seven, if you're running version six, five, if you're running a different version, maybe you're watching this in the future and there's a version nine, the steps will be very, very similar. But uh, you'll see that when I create a new data store, it's gonna give me a few different options over here. Create new VMFS, mount NFS data store. Create VMFS means that it's gonna be over an iSCSI protocol and mount NFS means it's gonna be over the NFS protocol. Now on my QNAP over here, under the um, uh, the privileged area, you go and create yourself some shared folders. Uh, I've created a couple here, one called VMware, one called test. Once I've done that, 
I go making sure that the right group has got permissions, right? Making sure that Emilio, for example, has got the right permissions. And then under the NFS host access, I wanna make sure that my host, my VMware host, or any other virtualization host that you may be using is marked in there to have read write access. And you'll see that I've put there the IP address of my ESXi host, you can also just do a star, which means really anything. And as long as that has got access to it, you then should be able to add the NFS. Under the network and file services area, under Win Mac NFS, you've got a section here called NFS service. And you wanna make sure that NFS service is turned on. And you can do it over NFS version two, version three, version four, and version 4.1. If I just jump back to my ESXi host, you notice that when I say mount NFS data store and next, it's gonna give me NFS version three or NFS, uh, NFS version four. Now, essentially what I would do here, if it's gonna be an NFS connection, is I just put in the name of the data store. What is the name of the data store that I want to be creating? I can make this data store whatever I want. Then I'm gonna put the server and the server here being the NFS server, which is the IP address of my QNAP NAS. So in my case, mine is 172.16.1.54. So I would throw that right into there and then the share itself. I've got VMware and test. So I throw in my full path to my VMware test right in this section over here, and then it should mount that uh, share in my VMware environment. So when you're creating your NFS side of things, you give that NFS share the appropriate size. So if it's gonna be 100 gig, you give it 100 gig over here, and then when you're connecting it into here as a data store, it will be seen and displayed as a 100 gig uh, data store in there. In the control panel section, I'm gonna select over here, storage and snapshots. This is of course the spot we went and um, created all of my disks. Initially, you can see a summary of all of my shared folders slash LUN. Down the very bottom, you've got this section here on iSCSI and fiber channel. iSCSI being that it is using the iSCSI protocol generally over ethernet. So you think of your blue network cables, essentially the storage traffic will go over the iSCSI protocol. Fiber channel is where your NAS has fiber channel ports, maybe via an SFP module that you connect into it, has fiber channel connectivity, and then you have a almost a dedicated storage network running over fiber channel cables instead of over ethernet cables. Now in my case, I don't have fiber channel. Um, and if you have fiber channel ports and your server, your ESXi host has fiber channel ports, you can run it directly, or you can get even uh, fiber channel switches like brocade switches, for example, fiber channel switches where they're very similar to ethernet switches where they've got ethernet points. This has got fiber channel points instead. All right, that's uh, what the fiber channel is, but we're gonna be using iSCSI. Let's click on that over there. Now, because I've not done this before, it's gonna ask me, do I want to launch a configuration wizard? Sure, let's just go ahead and do this. You need an initiator on both sides. The, this wizard will guide you through creating an iSCSI target, which is used to manage iSCSI connectors or connections. So over here, you see a little bit of a graphic. Target, this is my LUN. Target here being my QNAP NAS. It's going over the iSCSI protocol. The initiator, in my case, will be my VMware host. Next. Okay, an iSCSI target is identified using its full iSCSI uh, or IQDN qualified name. For easy identification, you can also give it a shorter alias, all right? Here it is. So let's just call it QNAP LUN, and we're gonna go on next. Uh, CHAP, up to you whether you want to use CHAP. It's a password. So when you're on a host, you're connecting to your iSCSI initiator, which in our case is gonna be our QNAP. It's gonna say, what is the username and password? Uh, if you're doing this over fiber channel, well, you're not really using this. Over fiber channel, you've got zoning, you've got all these other things with a switch. So it's up to you whether you want to use CHAP or not. But if you do, you can go into head and do a customized CHAP, throw in a username and password into there. For, for now, for this demo, we'll say no CHAP. Now, what is the connection that I'm going to be doing this through? Now, in my case, I've only got the one. So I'm gonna select that one. Now, I would recommend, I would highly, highly recommend, and this is one of the other benefits and perks of having multiple NICs, multiple network points on a NAS, on a SAN, because you can now split your traffic. So you could have adapter one, which is your management. This is to manage all of your, your NAS, to use your NFS, you use all these other things. And you could actually set another adapter to be a dedicated storage network using just iSCSI. So that adapter, all that's doing is the connection between the VMware host 
and your NAS. Summary of what's going on, okay? And I'm gonna say apply. That's now gonna go and create all the bits and pieces that I need. Now here is my LUN name. I've only got one storage pool, it's not a problem. And now do you want it to be thin or thick provision? Now this is completely up to you. I personally do like thick provisioning for storage and thin provisioning on the VMware side. Now, whichever one you choose is up to you. I'm gonna say for me and for my demo, I'm gonna do thick provisioning on here. And then when I'm on VMware and I'm creating my VMs and I'm creating a C drive and things like that, I may make those thin provision on that side, but it's up to you between those two. How big do you want it to be? Let's just leave it at the default. You can really make that whatever you want, but we're gonna say 567 gigabytes. We want it to have compression everything else we're looking okay you'll see that by default it's gone and set a 64k around the block size uh, because that's the suggestion around hyper-v but i'm going to be doing it over vmware so i'm just going to set it to 32. do you want some lun encryption do you want to encrypt your lun itself again if you need that security and you want to make sure that the lun itself is encrypted you can throw that into there and create now a few things to note here is we now know our iqdn Here's our big IQDN number. Here is the capacity, 567. We're now gonna go into our ESXi host. Now you will have to do this on one host, uh, but then if you've got things like vCenter, then you can actually do this on one and then scan it across all the others and then you can add it to each individual host one by one. But what we wanna do is under the uh, storage area, you'll see that you've got our data stores right over here. And if you remember, we went before to go new data store and we did all the thing over here. But before we even do this, we need to tell our VMware ESXi host, where is my iSCSI initiator? Where is this QNAP NAS? It doesn't even know, it doesn't know where to look yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the adapters section over here. And at the moment, uh, there's nothing done in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select on software iSCSI. We're gonna go ahead and enable our iSCSI initiator. It'll take a little bit of time to actually enable it. Now, if yours is enabled, great. That means that somebody's done this at some point for you. But essentially now our iSCSI initiator is enabled on my VMware side. Until you do this, you're not gonna be able to really use iSCSI because you need to turn that bit on on our VMware side, the same as you've gone and done it on the QNAP side, on the NAS side. You've created the initiator, you've then created the LUN, great, but now you need to go into VMware and create the initiator there as well. So once it's enabled, good to go. Here is that chat bit that we were talking about. So if you do have chat authentication, this is where you go and throw in those credentials to make sure that it is a secure environment. Now you can do network port binding, you can do static targets. Now, one thing here, again, let me remove this over here. If you do static target, then you need to know the full IQDN. Okay, you can go add static, and in here you throw in this big old number right over here. That is your IQDN, and you can throw it right into there to enable that connection, and then throw the IP address of your VM or of your QNAP, I should say. So this will be the target, the IQDN, that unique number of the iSCSI initiator on the QNAP side, and then the IP address of the QNAP, okay? Uh, if you don't want to type that in or you don't want to do the copy paste thing, all right, you don't have to use that. You can just go into dynamic targets and it'll just dynamically find it for you. And that's fine too. So I'm going to say, I'm going to actually do that. Add dynamic target. Now all it's going to ask me is for the IP address the IP address of my QNAP. Now I'm just gonna say, uh, for this to be able to work, you need to make sure that there is a, a connection established between the two, that everything is open. I'm gonna say save config. Now if all things have worked, it should say that it has been successful and hopefully yours actually shows that it's successful. If I go back into software SCSI, see it's thrown in there and have a look at this. Under my static target, it's actually automatically gone and added in this big old number. And it's found that the iSCSI initiator on my QNAP is saying, yep, I'm here, hello, I'm happy to share my stuff with you. Here is the IQDN. Now, if everything has worked here, I should now be able to go into my QNAP, and you may have seen this before, it now says that it is connected. And here is the IP address of my, the IP address of my host. And you can go and verify by verifying this big IQDN, uh, IQN number, right over here should be the same number as listed right over there. And if everything is good, great. You're now ready to go. Now, if I go back into my data stores, at the moment, there is no data store. Okay, there's no data store because the data store has not been connected, has not been created yet. All that's been done is we've connected just the iSCSI 
points on both sides, yeah? So now comes the fun part where we go and select new data store over here, and we say create new VMFS data store and select next. Now, right off the bat, this has shown up. This is my QNAP iSCSI disk, 567 gig. If I go back into here, 567 gig. If yours does not show up here automatically, something has gone wrong. You'll have to go back, rewatch some of these steps, make sure that the initiators are working on both ends, make sure there's a connection established on both ends, make sure that on the QNAP, it says connected, make sure that on the VMware side, it shows that things are connected on the iSCSI side, because unless that is working, the next bit is not gonna work. So now that that's there, I can give this a name, I can call it my QNAP, like so. Next, do I wanna use the full 567 gig or not? Up to you, you, you don't have to use all of it unless you really want to. And then what is the actual format? Um, VMFS version five, VMFS version six. This will become relevant if you're working with earlier versions of VMware. ESXi, for example, you may not have a compatibility issue between that, but then you're gonna have different versions of VMFS. In future versions, there'll be version seven, version eight, version nine, etc. So you wanna make sure that you're backwards compatible in those cases. Next, we, look, we like the look of that. We now click on finish. The entire contents of the disk is about to be erased and replaced. Yes, I'm sure. We are happy with that. And now my QNAP now is successfully created. You wanna know more about QNAPs? You wanna know more about VMware and other techie related things? I've got training courses, as I said at the very start. Go and check some of those out. Down below, I've got a link to them. And also click on the subscription button. I would love it if you subscribed, but a lot of you are not. So please do subscribe, click on the button on the bell. Would really appreciate it. And until then, keep playing with all that tech and we'll see you on the next video.